Hi, this is Lori Way from the shores of Lake Union in beautiful Seattle, Washington, where I am a real estate broker with Cobalt Banker Bain. Today I want to talk to you for a few minutes about fences. Whether you're in an existing home and wanting to build a fence, or if you're out looking at homes and fences are important to you for through any reason of small children, animals, and just plain privacy, you need to check into a couple of things prior to building the fence. So the first thing you want to do is you want to know that 90% of homeowners pay for their own fence. Uh, a lot of people think that all the neighbors will go in together. That doesn't happen, obviously, except for 10% of the time. So just think, count on the fact that you'll be paying for it, and then if a neighbor decides to be neighborly and pitch on, on it, that's just frosting on the cake. So number two, you want to check in with uh, your municipalities and your homeowner's development, if there is one, uh, whether it's the city or the county. Um, check and make sure that fences are av available in that area to put up. Make sure you know what kind of permits need to be done um, in case they do. Uh, some people, you know, some municipalities will allow fences up to six feet tall without permits but you need to make sure and find out in your particular municipality. You'll also want to check with the Homeowners Association if you do have one. There may be an architectural committee that will have also certain rules and regulations regarding um, the height, the size, the color, the type of fence that you can put up in your neighborhood. So you want to find that out ahead of time. Number three, you want to contact your title company and find make sure that there aren't any easements on your property, um, whether it's an ingress or egress. Uh, for the property, you want to make sure that you're not going to be blocking it with the fence and having to tear it down after you've paid for it. Also really, really important, guys, is to call the utility company. Make sure there's no underground utilities there. And uh, before you even start digging, the utility company will come out and they can put flags out and show you where to dig and where not to dig or where your contractor will dig or not dig. Um, and that's super, super important, so call before you dig. Also, you want to make sure that you've got a good starting point. A lot of times um, there has been a survey done on your property at one time, and so you might go out into the four corners of the property and find out there might be just metal stakes that look like rebar kind of um, in, at one of the corners of the property. Or you can also go out on the street or the sidewalk, and it kind of looks like a little round uh, metal bottle cap that has been stamped into the cement or the asphalt of the sidewalk or the street. And that will be a great starting point because that is a survey starting point. So that would be a great starting point for measuring your fence. Um, if you don't see something like that, um, you're going to probably want to get a survey and get a good starting point of your fence and what your property lines are. It's going to be a whole heck of a lot cheaper to have a survey done than to erect a fence and then have to tear it down again, not to mention the problems it's going to cause with your neighbor that challenged you on where the fence lines were. So I think that's it as far as just some quick details about fences go. I hope it was helpful. If you do have any other questions, if I don't know the answer, I will probably know somebody that does. So I'd be glad to put them in contact with you. Give me a call or an email, and I'll see you next time.